Good evening and salutations, my Days of Elias fans. So, you know what? Let's start with Kristen. Um, here's the thing about this character. This woman is emotionally unstable. Um, and I know that she loves Brady and everything like that, but I don't know if I ever want a woman to love me like that. Like, that's just dangerous and deranged. Um, and what makes her so, I mean, you know, a lot of things make her dangerous, but the fact of the matter is, she didn't even care, like, what would happen to Rachel as far as her seeing her again. You know? She was so... Like, head set on getting revenge and blaming Chloe. And I'm not snitching saying that Chloe didn't have a part in this. Because, to be honest, she's the one that wrote Brady into this. Into this whole mob thing. You know? I'm not snitching saying it's her fault that he got shot. But, you know, if you're going to sit there and start class, you know, passing around blame here about this whole thing... Yeah, yeah, because, it, yeah, um, yeah, she gets in the hospital, and, you know, she pulls a gun on Chloe, and she's all like, you did this, you did this, and, and at first, Chloe just isn't able to speak for some odd reason, but then she explains everything that happened, and how, you know, she, you know, asked for his help as far as dealing with the whole Philip situation, and right then there, she just starts blaming her. Now, earlier, you know, John Black got a call. He goes to the hospital. And he sees dangerous, deranged Kristen. And he talks some sense into her and talks her down. And she leaves and she goes, you know, she's outside. And she's talking to um, Chad and Tony and uh, Marlena. And they're trying to get the gun away from her. And Marlena's able to sit there and talk her down. I'm sitting there thinking the whole time while this whole conversation is going. Where the hell are the police at? Where are they? <laughs> um, you know, but finally, you know, Chad convinces her that it's the best thing to do. As far as trying to not get any more time added on to her sentence already. To, you know, to, you know, let the police know where she is and... You know, take her ass back to jail. Um, you know, I don't know what the issue with, as far as Marlena and um, Kristen's concerned. But after seeing the way that she was acting today, I was like, yeah, you know what? I kind of understand it. This chick is crazy. And I don't mean crazy like, like crazy. I mean like she is dangerous crazy. Like... <laughs> You know, John was sitting there telling her, listen, you know, Brady may not be awake, but he senses everything that's going on. You're not helping the situation. I don't know what state Kristen was in, and I don't even understand. I mean, listen, I get that she wanted to be with her boyfriend. She wanted to make sure he was okay, but, like, I mean, you really think that, like, you breaking out of prison and being there was really going to make that much of a difference? Because I feel like in the long run, you are hurting yourself, you are hurting Brady, you are hurting Rachel by what you are doing. <sighs> wow. I mean, everyone wants love in this world, but there's, there's a certain type of love that you just are like, I'm good. You know? Like, that's... Listen, I don't know what their relationship is, I don't know... How you want to fall in love with her or what their story is, but like, like really? Her? Okay. <laughs> um, that type of love is poison. And that's what I'm going to say about that. Uh, now here's a waste of a scene. Anna and Abigail. Listen, if you haven't been watching what's been going on for the last past couple of days or whatever, fine, cool. I get it. 
because all Abigail was doing was catching up, um, catching up, um, you know, what's going on as far as, you know, Gwen being her half-sister and why she was doing what she was doing as far as Jack, you know, supposedly abandoning them. I get it. But for everyone else who've been watching this show, this was damn near a complete other waste of time. After she finished giving her the lowdown. Ugh. Okay. So Anna is all like, you have to forgive Chad. He didn't know. He was tricked. He was just human. You know, you, you know, and the children. And th I'm not going to lie. That was the part that just pissed me off. That just, like. <sighs> it was like nails under my skin, if I can really describe that. Children aren't stupid. Okay, and getting back together for the sake of your children will actually, in some cases, actually wind up doing more harm than good. Because they can sense resentment in the room. So, Snitch so is saying, well, you should get back for the children. You should get back for the ch I'm trying not to curse, but that, that just irked the living life out of me. Now, here's the thing. You know, Abigail talks about how, you know, listen, if he didn't already, like, distrust me from the start, then all the stuff that she said really wouldn't have worked, you know? And she's absolutely right. And while, and while Anna sits there trying to fight for Chad and them to get back together, the only thing that I can sit there and say in Chad's defense... And as much as, well, we all know how much I really don't like Chad. Chad was drunk. And Gwen took advantage of him while he was in an inebriated state. And to this day, that's still, you know, all the excuses and everything like that. You know, her reasons for why she did what she did. Alright, fine. They're stupid. They're petty. But, you know, the writers are trying to use this to shake things up. You know, the shake up the status, uh, status quo. I get it. But that's just something that would never sit well with me. Even, I, let's put it this way. I don't care if Gwen saved a bus of children that was burning down. There are certain things to, in my eyes that I just feel that is just unforgivable. And... Yeah, the whole, you know, her excuse of, well, he wanted it, is never going to say right. Because honestly, to tell you the truth, at this point, I'm looking at the situation as though she raped him. That is... <laughs> like, this woman, every time she's on the screen, she physically makes me sick. Bravo for the actress that's playing her. I have no ill will towards the actress, but the character makes me sick to my stomach. And for that, as far as the whole, you know, sleeping with her, yeah. I mean, the act of what he did, it, it wasn't like he was sober and he was conscious. He made that conscious decision to do that. So that is something that I will be like, okay. But that's probably the only, one of the very few times I will ever actually give him a pass and be like, defending him um, for that situation. You know, the whole Anna talking about y'all soulmates, this and the third. I was like, Anna, can this scene just end at this point? That's what I'm sitting there thinking. But, uh, you know, she calls up Chad and, you know, she's going to have a talk with him, I guess, the next day and talk about... You know, them trying to rebuild their trust in the marriage and everything like that. You know, um... Uh, you know, I should tell you the truth, I'm not going to lie. This whole... I'm not really a fan of those characters. Abigail, eh, Chad is a dick. So I should tell you the truth, I'm not really invested into them. Either way, but, um... Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Um, You know, they say love sometimes isn't enough. But, you know, when you have family and kids, the long time that they've been together, they gotta count for something. 
let's talk about Xander, Philip, and Victor. So Xander pretty much told Philip everything. I mean, um, told um Victor everything. The whole, you know, how Philip is, you know, involved in the mob. He's using Titan to launder the money. All of it. Philip comes in and, um, you know, he tries to explain his side. Now, Victor is, you know, upset with Philip because of Brady. You know, his whole mess that he's gotten the family into. And now, you know, his, I don't know if it's his nephew or his grandson or whatever. His family, one of his family members could possibly die because of it. So the sit there and say he is um, angry with Philip is an understatement. Yeah, you know, I said this yesterday, and my um, you know it it hasn't changed. Those two start arguing, and Philip is like, "Listen, they were happy, everything was fine, until you decide to um, dissolve that shell company and stop the flow, you know, the money flow." And, you know, Xander's like, you know, this whole thing started. He's like, yo, you're not just going to pass the buck on to me. This whole thing started because of you. And, yes, Xander has a point. That whole thing, everything started because of Philip. You know, him being in, you know, Brady being in the hospital. Yeah, has a lot to do with Philip. The majority of it has a lot to do with Philip. But, with that being said, and I know that Xander is a fan favorite, I, 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 I don't care. <laughs> I, I, Xander knew exactly what was going to happen when he dissolved that company. Okay? He's not a moron. He knew exactly what was going to happen. And he did it anyway. You know? And then he, then he stood there with Sarah and was like, oh, maybe they'll just rough him up a little bit. Or maybe they'll just sit there and put a bullet in one of his family members. I guess he didn't really think that far into the future, huh? Before he decided to just do it. And I honestly tell you the truth, even Sarah was like, what? what? It's one of those things where it was like, maybe if Sarah was there, she would have convinced him not to do that. Because, you know, actions have consequences. But, listen, I get it. I know that Xander has a past and a history of being a villain and a bad guy. And everything that he's doing, you know, it's... Kind of like riding a bike for the first time, to some extent. So I get the whole redemption and trying to be a better person. I get all that. I do. And if this was just some guy that wasn't in his family members or whatever, maybe I could be like, ah, whatever, what's the harm? Oh, wait a minute, I'm trying to be a better person now. This was somebody in his family, okay? He's not an idiot. He knew exactly what was going to happen. So my point is... Yes, he deserves some of that responsibility. I don't give a damn what he said. You knew exactly what was going to happen. And you did it anyway. So while they're going back and forth, back and forth. And yes, I know ultimately it is Philip, but yeah. I think there's enough blame to just kind of throw around a little bit. Um, and you know, Victor wasn't too happy with Xander either. Because he was like, you should have came to me. Of course, Xander, when he said he did... You didn't really listen, and here we are. Um, they argue a little bit more, and at this point, Victor's like, I need to talk to my son. Long story short, Philip asks um, Victor for forgiveness. And Victor's like, well, that depends if uh, Brady's going to make it. So I guess we'll just see. Yeah, I think that's about it. Um, and you know, just FYI, I do actually, I do like Xander, but when he does something that I feel like it's, well, stupid, or whatever, I will call that out, and granted, you have to sit there and just kind of take this with a grain of salt, that I only started watching a show back, mm, March, maybe, June, July, give or take. So I don't really understand, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not fully privy to Xander's backstory. And I don't mean, like, I can sit there and look at Wikipedia and find that out. Um, but watching something is different than just reading it. 
you know, I, I look at General Hospital and I look at a character like Sam. And everyone, you know, a lot of people don't like Sam and everything like that. And when she acts a certain way, people are just like, what the hell? But then you go back and you actually watch scenes, like, years back, and you watch scenes and you understand it because you see the character, you see the emotion of what this character is going through. So you understand it a little bit more clearer than if somebody is watching it, let's say, today. And that's kind of how I view it with Xander. You know, his redemption from being a bad guy to him trying to be a better person for the love of his life. And hopefully just because he wants to be a better person, which I I think he does. Um, but yeah, when I'm harsh on people, it's not because I just feel like being a dick to them. It's because I see the actions of how that person is in that present day and I call them out for it. Um, but yeah, that's, yeah. Anyway, um, I don't think anything else really happened too much except for, you know, Kristen was like, oh, you're going to pay for this. This isn't over. Yada, yada, yada. I was like, okay, whatever. Just like go somewhere. Um, but yes, with that being said, I don't think anything else really too much happened. If anything did, please write it down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Be safe. I will catch everyone in the next review.